All right, hey there, we're going to take a look at, uh, just beginning here, we're gonna look at the properties of real numbers. And uh, first thing we we'll do is kind of study what we have here. So a natural number, these are all natural numbers, and these are counterexamples, so none of these are. So we're gonna point out some of the things that they definitely cannot be, right? So I definitely don't see any negatives on the left-hand side that are okay. Um, I don't see a zero, that is usually there Pretty particular for a reason. I don't see any decimals. I see fractions on both sides, but keep in mind that this reduces to two. Uh, I see a square roots on both sides, but what's the square root of nine? A uh, three, right? So we're just going to try and think about what they can't be. So natural numbers, I'm going to give you a clue here. Natural numbers are also known as counting numbers. So the fact that zero is a counterexample tells us something about the way it starts, right? How do you start counting? Right, one banana, two banana. All right, so we start counting with one, and our counting numbers, natural numbers. This is normally what we say by accident about whole numbers. Okay, so we're going to keep that in mind as we take a look at the next group. So the next group is whole numbers. Notice counterexamples have negatives, decimals. Uh, they have some fractions in there. These are all things that it can't be. Uh, still have decimals. Looks like it's repeating. Um, I see square roots on both, but again, I have this where these reduce very, very nicely. Same thing with these fractions. That's actually two, and that's two as well. Okay, so again, we have some of the same idea, but the big key here is what number? Did you circle it on your paper already? Yeah, so whole numbers include that zero. Okay, so normally I highlight the O in whole numbers. Okay, so it's, whole, so it's natural numbers plus zero. All right, the next one we have are the integers. So now I see negatives over here, so they're okay. I see zero, I see positives. I see square roots, but they happen to be three, negative two, and four. All right, so let's find out what cannot be an integer. I see decimals, I see fractions, and again, I see these square roots. That would not be okay. And I see pi, that one's kind of interesting. We'll take a look at that. All right, so we're just trying to build that idea. We don't have to have anything particular yet, but I do see basically all of my other numbers, except for now we're gonna add in the negatives. But remember, no decimals and no fractions. I'm gonna write that as A over B, right? So if I see those two things and it's already reduced, then that's not cool, okay? But big key here is you do wanna reduce the whole thing. So before we get to our next group, think about this. Think of a person that's a rational person, right? What type of behavior do you see at a rational person versus irrational, okay? Which one do you wanna be friends with? Okay, so who's your friend? All right, can you be a stinker on me? All right, so who wants to be friends? Rational or irrational? That gave you enough time to think, right? So your friend is normally someone that's rational, right? That's someone you can count on. Someone that's irrational, you can't really count on them. Okay, so irrational, they're a little bit crazy. They're unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen next. What? You don't know what's going to happen next. Okay, so irrational, this is pi, right? because we don't know what's gonna happen next with the number pi, it goes on and on and on. Okay, so how would you drive, describe someone driving irrationally? Okay, so maybe they're swerving through lanes, they're going super fast, uh, maybe they're off the road, um, right? We don't wanna go down the road of why someone would drive irrationally, right? Maybe they're upset, maybe they had some other issues going on, okay, but uh, what would it look like, right? So maybe they're swerving, you could put swerve in there if you want to. So that means all of these are rational numbers. Look at all the things that fit in there. And all of these counterexamples must be irrational numbers. All right, so best example here is gonna be pi for your irrational numbers. And the next best example, if I ask you for more than one, which I will, I'll do it, is the square root of something that's not a perfect square. Okay, so our rational numbers, notice it's going to look like a lot of the things we've already talked about, right? I see a counting or natural number in here, 
I see a whole number in here. I see an integer in here. So here's the only difference is now that I have a decimal that repeats or it stops, right? These guys here, they just stop, right? We call that terminate. So if it repeats or terminates, then it is a rational number. If I can make a fraction out of it, it is a rational number. Okay? Remember these square root guys? These things here are perfect squares, right? This is four, this is two, this is negative three, so they're okay. So I really wanna take a look at those examples versus counterexamples and go back and forth. All right, so what's a real number? Well, a real number is everything we just talked about. So that is rational and irrational numbers. Right, this is an Algebra 1 class. That's everything that we're going to talk about. Okay, real numbers. We won't get into the imaginaries, not till Algebra 2. All right, so where do you want to go next? I like to start with the smallest group. So natural numbers, natural numbers. Those are also the counting numbers. How do you start counting? One, two, three, four, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so that's our counting numbers, natural numbers. All right, you want to be a show off? Tell me the one number, tell me the one number that goes into this set that makes up the whole numbers. Remember this one? All right, so it's zero, one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so it's gonna go on and on and on. Integers, what do we allow in the group now for integers? Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, dot, 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 both ways. Okay, notice, no decimals, no fractions. Okay, this is the big key here. A lot of times I'll ask kids, oh, what about negative 2.2? All of a sudden they'll say integers, but no decimals, no fractions in your integers. All right, so the next thing we have, rational number. Um, well, let's jump to irrational number. Best example of irrational, it's delicious after dinner too, it's pie. After that, remember I said I was gonna ask for another one. How do I come up with another one? Oh yeah, I do the square root of something that is not perfect, right? So the square root of two, Square root of three would work, can't use square root of four, square root of five, anything like that, as long as we don't know that it's a perfect square. Okay, so rational number. So that's gonna be all of these things. Okay, so if it's a natural number, a whole number, integer, it's automatically a rational number. The big key here is now I can use two thirds, right? So I can have a fraction. So all fractions, and for decimals, they have to fit into two categories. They either terminate, which means stop, or they have to repeat, or they have to repeat, or they have to repeat. Get it? I know, it's terrible, right? I'm so full of dad jokes, it, I don't even try anymore, okay? All right, so if they terminate, which means stop, or they repeat, then you're talking about a rational number. If it's a fraction, it's automatically a rational number. So that's the first half of what we need to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump down to the bottom and we're gonna try those out before we get to these other properties. All right, so what you wanna do is try this one out. Can you put them all in the right place? So pause your video. All right, now that you had a chance to pause it, let's see if we can't put all of these in the right place. So I'm gonna take zero first. Zero is a whole number. The square root of 19. Do I know the square root of 19? I know 16 and I know 25, but 19, that's just a mess. Now we also have another problem that it doesn't fit in as a rational number, but I don't have a category for irrational. Remember, real numbers include your irrational numbers. Pi, speaking of irrational, it is after dinner. I'm starting to get hungry. Now don't let me trick you with this. 3.14, what does that decimal do? You know what that decimal does. It stops, it terminates. So that makes it a rational number, 3.14. So don't just say, oh, that's pi. That'd be good if you knew that was pi. That's a good start. All right, negative 3.8. Oh no, you didn't say it, did you? No, it can't be an integer because it's a decimal. All right, remember that's the one I said, I'm gonna try and trick you. What about 4.1? Don't do it again. 4.1, that's a rational number as well. 7 squared, these got jammed together, right? So I'm focused on 7 squared. What's 7 squared? 7 times 7 is 49. 
Can you count to 49? I know you can. So proud of you. What about the square root of nine? That's just three. That one's okay. Plain old five. We gotta fit all these things in here. I hope you're writing small. I really do. 212. I can count to 212. 10. Got it. I hope that's all that needs to fit in there. Negative one half. Careful. Negative doesn't always mean integer. So I still don't have an integer because it's a fraction. But it is a rational number. Negative one half. Negative 24. Dun dun dun. There we go. We finally got an integer. There it is. One fourth. One fourth. Okay, that's a fraction, so it at least has to be rational, if not something better. So one fourth. How'd you do? Give yourself a sticker if you did well, or a gold star, or a blue star. I don't care what color. Just give yourself a star. Everybody likes to get stars on their paper. Boom. Look, I did pretty good. All right, last part. Here we go. What's it mean to commute? All right, every couple days you come to school, right? So what's that mean? Right? You started at home and you went to school and then you went from school and you went home. That's what your commute means. What does this have to do with math class, Mr. Rotolo? I don't know everything. So here's what I'm talking about. When we talk about addition and multiplication, we have this commutative property. So A plus B equals B plus A. 2 plus 5 equals 5 plus 2. Does it not? I'm pretty sure it does. We could replace those plus signs with your multiplication. That's a commutative property. Notice I'm changing the order. I'm changing the order. All right. What's an association? You guys in an association? Now, this one association that I know of right now, they were pretty smart. They took all their teams and they put them in a bubble down in Disney World, which what's better than Disney World? I don't know, nothing. Okay, they get Mickey Mouse and Mickey Mouse waffles and Mickey Mouse pretzels, Mickey Mouse ice cream. All right, tangent, sorry about that. An association down in the bubble, that's the NBA, the National Basketball Association. That is a group, okay? so. Here's what we're going to set up. A, B, and C. We're going to use addition. A, B, and C. I'm going to use addition again. This works for addition and for multiplication. You're not going to get this mixed up ever again after you see this. All right. So you are going to be the letter B. Hello, letter B. Who's your best friend? I hope you said it's A. Now that was before lunch. And then after lunch, you're the letter B. And you saw some sort of text message from A and you didn't like it so much. Now you're still friends, it wasn't that bad, okay? But now your best friend is C. Okay, when you change your association. Okay, that's why we're trying to key on the vocab part of it because it really helps you identify wh which rule we're talking about. Uh, so if you change your association, that is now the associative property. Okay, so pretty common misconception, one thing that I can often get kids to mix up. So if I do this ABC like this, um, and then I do uh, BAC, I do this, kids will look at it and they say this parentheses, that must be the associative property, and it's not. All I did was change the order, see? And if all I do is change the order, then this one is actually the commutative property. Okay, so that one's a pretty good one. If you want to jot it down, make sure you mark it as a commutative property so we have those two things straightened out. And so that's my big long tangent all about the commutative property and the associative property. And I hope some of it made sense. If not, you know, we'll figure it out in class. So we're doing this hybrid thing. Commutative property, numbers or letters. What do you think? Why am I asking you? I can't hear you. All right. Addition, two plus three. 3 plus 2. Multiplication, 2 times 3 equals 3 times 2. Associative property, ABC and AB with a C. Oh, whoops. 
Let's squeeze in some plus signs. Got to add of myself there. Okay. A, B with a C and A with a B, C. All right. So notice the order doesn't matter as long as we change that group who you're grouped with. Okay. So think of the N, B, A, or don't forget the W, N, B, A. All right. We don't want to leave anybody out. All right, the identity property. Now we didn't address these, but I think you can get them as we talk about it. So in addition, so if I'm the number five, what do I have to add to me to keep the number five? Because I like being number five, okay? I have to add zero. What if I am multiplying, what do I have to multiply by so I can stay the number five? One, okay? So these vary just a little bit for multiplication. All right, the one that's usually a little bit stinky here, the inverse. So I want five and then plus what thing gives me zero? Well, that'd have to be negative five, right? So this one is gonna be with its addition, we're talking about subtraction. So if it's multiplication, I have to be thinking about division, but I don't get to actually divide. So what I have to do is use the reciprocal. Okay, remember that's when we flip it over. So I'm gonna get one. So these two properties, they get confused and I completely understand. But remember identity is really about staying who you are. Five wants to stay five. So if it's by addition or multiplication, what, what do we have to do to make that happen? Inverse, this is how you solve things. And the last one, distributed property, uh, two, let's go with um, x plus five. And let's just distribute here. So it becomes 2x plus 10. Now you often see this as maybe x minus 1. And they might put a 5 over here. This is very common on your standardized test. So I want to make sure I show it to you at least one time here. So distributive property works both ways, whether it's from the left or the right. But it's all about multiplication. All right. Hey, that was it. That's the first one. We tried these already. Get a couple warm-up problems if you want to practice your order of operations. Go ahead and pause it there, and we'll check those answers out in class.